Pace at 12. The news at noon starts right now. Violence has members of a family in far West Bear County on two sides of the law. Sheriff's investigators say one man is accused of stabbing two of his relatives and also cutting himself. They say it happened in a home in a neighborhood not far from Highway 90 and Crewall Road. As Katrina Weber reports, investigators are still trying to figure out what led to it. Crime scene tape marks off the scene where the Bear County Sheriff's Office says one family's problems became a public case. Deputies were called here to the 9900 block of Misty Plain for a stabbing in progress just before 10 last night. When they arrived, they say they found two stabbing victims, both critically wounded, as well as the suspect who also had been cut. They told us the man stabbed his younger brother at first, then stabbed his father and cut himself as they struggled over the knife. A preliminary report from the sheriff's office and a supervisor at the scene both said the suspect is 18 years old. However, we did some digging and found records online showing a 22 year old man who lives at that home was arrested around that same time last night on two counts of aggravated family assault. With all of the flashing lights and the blocked off street, this is the kind of commotion that would have attracted a lot of attention in this neighborhood. But no one who we met up with today wanted to talk about it at all. Sheriff's investigators spent some time talking to people last night in that home and in others nearby, and it appears they're still trying to sort out what happened. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The Dos Goats fire in Medina County is still 95% contained. Today, Medina County Emergency Management Coordinator Keith Lutz says he hopes High Mountain Ranch subdivision will reopen to everyone, not just residents. As those people return home, fire crews are asking everyone to stay vigilant because of persistent drought and fire conditions across the region. Outside with live can, yeah, we got some rain this morning, but it probably didn't make much of a dent in all this dryness that we're having all throughout South Texas. No, it was not enough. We needed a lot more than what we got this morning. Picked up less than a tenth of an inch in most spots here in San Antonio, only seven hundredths of an inch. That's not going to do it. We've got gusty winds kicking in now, so those fire concerns are coming right back into play today. 37, the latest gust here in San Antonio. I think we'll see some gusts up over 40 miles per hour, especially out west. Places like Del Rio already looking at gusts at 44 miles per hour. It's going to be a windy afternoon. These winds don't die down until tonight. So expect these very gusty winds. Not only that, we have the dry air. So that's a, we have a critical fire weather today. Uh, bottom line here, no outdoor burning. Just be extra careful because any fire that gets going is going to spread very quickly with these winds and all that dry fuel that we have out there. Here's the bigger picture. And we had a storm system come through this morning. That's what brought the rain. It's now pushing east out ahead of its severe weather. There's going to be quite a bit of severe weather across the southeast today. And then we'll get uh, another push of drier air coming in tonight. It's going to be a chilly start to your Thursday. Uh, you can see all the active weather off to our east now. Most of Texas getting a chance to clear out. But we've got the winds on the back side of this system. Temperatures make it up to about 85 this afternoon. Northwesterly winds gusting. Uh, again, 30 to 35, maybe 40 through the afternoon, and then they will start to die down some tonight. 83 by 7 o'clock, 80 by 8 p.m., and then tonight we fall into the 60s. By midnight, we're at 60, but by tomorrow morning, probably some 40s on the map to start. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a bit. All right, Justin, thank you. Now to the latest in a murder investigation. A suspect is facing charges after police accused him of shooting a man that was found dead in his truck after crashing on the far west side earlier this year. Officers tell us 28 year old Patrick Zavala was found dead back on January 3rd on Ingham Road near Loop 410. Police say surveillance video showed two men holding up Zavala at gunpoint, shooting him, then taking the victim's phone. Officers say one of the suspects left behind a digital device at the scene. Police found it and used the fingerprints and activity on it to track down both suspects. The police report says some of the evidence included conversations on social media where one of the suspects says he shot the victim in the chest. A teenage girl had to be rushed to the hospital after a gun went off inside of a Northwest Side hotel room. So far, police are saying this shooting was an accident. This morning, officers were called out to this Clarion Point Hotel on the 4800 block of Manitou Drive. It's near 410 in Callahan. Police say four people were inside of a room on the fourth floor when a gun accidentally went off, grazing a 14-year-old girl in the neck. 
Detectives are still trying to figure out who the gun belonged to and if anyone will face charges. The other people who were inside of the room when the teen with the teen were taken in for questioning. A man is dead after he was hit by a vehicle on the far west side. It happened just before 11 last night off of Culebra near Gom Road and Ranch View. Police say the man was in his 40s, was walking on a dimly lit road in dark clothes when he was hit by a woman driving a sedan. The man died at that scene. The woman did not stop to help and is not facing charges. To the coronavirus pandemic now, fewer people are getting sick here in Bexar County. Right now, Metro Health describes our risk level as low. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden is set to deliver a message about COVID-19. It's all in an effort to get funding from Congress for his administration's response plans. President Biden is expected to warn that the nation's progress in fighting the pandemic is at severe risk if Congress fails to act. Congress has been stuck in a months long stalemate over new funding to fight the pandemic. And the White House has said there's currently not enough money for a number of key COVID mitigation steps. We will bring you the president's remarks live when he's ready to speak around 1230. Also happening today, the White House is rolling out a new website aimed at helping Americans gain access to vaccines, tests, treatments and masks. COVID.gov is meant to be a one stop shop. It'll be available in English, Spanish, and simplified Chinese. The president is set officially to announce the website's launch during today's planned remarks. Now on to Russia's continued war in Ukraine. The sound of shelling still heard overnight and throughout this morning. That's despite Russia saying it would drastically reduce its combat operations in Kyiv to help foster peace. ABC's Ike Ijachi has the latest. Today in Ukraine, unrelenting and indiscriminate violence on display caused by Russian forces. Overnight, air raid sirens ringing out all over Ukraine. Cherniev and the Komoletsky regions were shelled. New explosions heard in the suburbs of Kiev, this coming after Russia pledged to drastically scale back military operations in parts of Ukraine, including the capital. ABC's James Longman is there. We've heard the repeated sound of artillery slamming into Kiev's suburbs. Remember, Russia has specifically not agreed to a ceasefire, so there's every chance they'll continue to bombard Ukraine, even if they move troops around the country. The Pentagon is confirming it's seeing a small number of Russian troops moving away from Kyiv, but says they're not withdrawing. The, their intention is to reposition forces and bolster their efforts elsewhere. After Tuesday's peace talks in Turkey, Ukrainian President Zelensky said any peace deal must include security guarantees from the U.S. and Western countries, including providing weapons to Ukraine and enforcing a no-fly zone. The U.S. seemed open to support. If uh, there is some kind of uh, outcome and if our support for, for Ukraine um, can, uh, can be part of that outcome, including our support in the future for its uh, defense and security. Of course, that's something we'll, um, uh, we'll want to pursue. In the port city of Mariupol, new satellite images reveal the extent of the devastation. Most neighborhoods reduced to rubble. Ukraine Emergency Service is releasing this video showing 67 firefighters battling a blaze at an oil depot in the Rivni region this morning. A U.S. official tells ABC News that Putin is being misinformed by his advisors on the war in Ukraine and on the performance of his military because his advisors are too afraid to tell him the truth. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Still coming up at this half hour, the Lakers are bad, and that is good for the Spurs. They've moved into a play-in spot. Larry Mirage with more on the Western Conference standings coming up. With the technology sector growing in San Antonio, future job seekers with a love of math and science may be in luck. That's why schools are working to get students interested in those sub subject. A look at what the efforts being made by one local campus after the break. Every year, more and more technology jobs are coming to the Alamo City. The Greater SATX Regional Economic Partnership shows that more than 1,000 tech companies call the San Antonio area home, and the average income is around $95,000. Wow, as Max Massey shows us, in an effort to get more families and students interested in the STEM field, Brooks Academy of Science and Engineering is hosting a special event. In an engineering class, we learn two types of power, pneumatics and hydraulics. Meet Malachi, a Brooks Academy senior who, like so many students across the country and across San Antonio, strives to enter a STEM-related career. 
I think I see there is a great awareness towards STEM education and its impact on our students' future, career-wise and education-wise. And I think in San Antonio, we are on, on the right trajectory. San Antonio has brought in a lot of new companies, a lot of new businesses, especially Port San Antonio, the Brooks Base area. What do you think the future of San Antonio looks like in terms of STEM? It's going to add 1.5 million STEM opportunities and careers in the next decade between 2020 and 2029. Thursday evening, Brooks Academy of Science and Engineering is hosting STEM Night to show community families and local students what the STEM path can consist of. And there'll be lots of STEM activities, solar cars, e-space, uh, virtual reality, uh, solar bracelets, food and music. The idea is to help prepare future generations for future careers. Also, it's, it's not only career-wise and educational-wise, it's also personality-wise. It's going to shape our students' personality. As for Malachi, he was accepted into Embry-Riddle's aerospace engineering program. So the sky is the limit. We made a solar oven to display this. Uh, as sunlight directs into our oven, it reflects off and just stores in here. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam, it is an absolutely gorgeous looking day. The only problem is... We need some rain. You got it. That's so true. We, we did get a little bit this morning, guys. It just was not enough. Uh, the totals were pretty low, but now we've got those gusty winds kicking in. And, of course, uh, we have humidity levels lowering. The, the aquifer... It's uh, staying steady today, so I guess that's good. 652.7 in your pollen count. Uh, oak is uh, moderate, 470 molds, uh, 300. Hackberry, mulberry, and ash are all low. We'll talk about those gusty winds. How high will they go? That forecast coming up. You know how little kids find the puddles to jump yeah. in? I was driving work today, we're like looking for the puddles to drive through because there's so few and far between these days. It's it like, was, oh wow, a puddle. Exactly. My dogs were so excited because they got to run out in the grass and the grass was wet. We just need more of that. Yeah, yeah. We could use some a point. lot more. Yeah, I stepped out in the rain this morning. It was glorious. I just wish it would last longer. It was like 30 minutes and out of here. And it, as we said earlier, it just did not add up to much. Now we've got sunny skies and these gusty winds are really starting to kick up. Let's look at the numbers because this is going to be the big story today. Gusts at 37 miles per hour already here in San Antonio. Gusting to 44 in Del Rio, 33 in Curvo. Very gusty winds. And these are the kind of numbers we're going to see uh, even into the afternoon. On top of that, humidity levels are dropping. Dew points are now in the mid-30s. You see some low 30s out west. These numbers may drop a little bit more before it's all said and done. So this is that combination we don't like. Very dry air, gusty winds contributing to our fire threat today. Let's talk about the, the rain this morning very quickly. I want to show you the time lapse. This is around 5 a.m. If you blink, you'll miss it. See some of the drops there on the screen? There it was. And then those clouds moved out quickly. And now we're left with blue skies. Looks nice out there. 78 degrees. Northwesterly winds at 25. Humidity levels dropping down to 21%. And as we look at the observed rainfall last night, it's hardly worth looking at. But... We picked up about 800 of an inch Canyon Lake, 700 of an inch at uh, San Antonio International, 400 of an inch in Seguin. This is all uh, much, much too low. Uh, we needed much more than that. And now that we've got these gusty winds kicking in, uh, the forecast calls for the winds to stick around through much of the afternoon and into the evening. 3 o'clock still seeing gusts, 30 to 35. It's not until 7 o'clock that we start to see the winds come down a little bit. Gusts maybe 20 to 25. And then overnight tonight, those winds will relax even more probably uh, light winds by the time we get into tomorrow morning. But uh, in the meantime, there is still that fire threat and we have to pass this along. No campfires or burn piles. Avoid using tools that create sparks. Dispose of cigarettes properly. Don't drag trailer chains. We see that a lot. Some of those grassy areas on the sides of the highways catch fire sometimes when stuff like that happens. And don't park your vehicles on grass. All of those can lead to grass fires and anything that develops today is going to spread quickly. So there's our critical fire weather in the wake of our storm system that moved through this morning. And as we zoom out some, you can see this big spring like system. And not only is it creating gusty winds for us, but it's creating severe weather to our east. A line of strong to severe storms now pushing into places like uh, Memphis, parts of Louisiana and eventually Mississippi and Alabama, where we are expecting widespread severe weather today. It looks like it's going to be an outbreak. 
Uh, there's a chance for tornadoes here, some long track tornadoes. Uh, not exactly what you want to see, but this is one of those systems uh, just very, very dynamic as it moves across the country. And you can see the tornado watch boxes that are in effect out ahead of this line of storms that will continue to march east throughout the rest of the evening. For us, we keep clear skies, those gusty winds. Temperatures will make it up into the mid 80s this afternoon and then slowly fall this evening. 83 by 7 o'clock, northwesterly winds at 15. And then by the time we get into tonight, temperatures drop off into the 60s and winds will lighten up some with clear skies. But with less wind by tomorrow morning and clear skies, we drop all the way down to 48 tomorrow. So have your jacket with you tomorrow morning. You don't necessarily need it tomorrow afternoon. But as Fiesta officially begins, we'll get some pretty nice weather. More clouds by the weekend. And then we're also watching Monday very closely. A chance for some showers and storms. Now we've got the river parade. We'll see how it all times out. But we'll keep you updated as we get a little bit closer. All right, Justin, thank you. Nothing better if you're a Spur fan or a Spur than waking up this morning and finding out you're in the play-in spot. You didn't even play last night. Yeah, they've what, won four in a row, the yep. Spurs, but the Lakers are going this way. <laughs> Spurs are going that way. You combine the two of them, and the Spurs are currently holding down the 10th and final play-in spot in the Western Conference race. Yes, the Spurs are on the rise, and in boys' high school soccer, Alma Heights is advancing. Coming up. Um, just built ourselves a big hole. Didn't, didn't give ourselves a chance. Um, didn't have much resistance to start the game. So, Who's behind them in the and because of that, on top of other issues, Russ and the Lakers stumble out of the play-in spot in big board sports. Dejounte Murray and the Spurs are now 10th in the Western Conference and currently in the play-in tournament. Thanks to the Mavs beating the Lakers last night. The Spurs and Lakers have identical records with 31 wins and 44 losses. But the Spurs have the advantage because they own the conference tiebreaker over the Lakers due to a better winning percentage against Western Conference teams. Josh Richardson says these playoff-like games are great for the young guys. Yeah, I think it's good for them just to, you know, be able to play in pressure games, you know, early in their careers because these are real real pressure on these games right now. And uh, I mean, I think they're doing a great job. Winners are four in a row. The Spurs will host the Grizzlies tonight, 730 at the AT&T Center. Now the Lakers play at the Mavericks last night without Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Davis has a right mid foot sprain and LeBron is dealing with an ankle issue. With those two out, the Mavs left from start to finish to beat the Lakers 128 to 100, dropping LA to 11th in the West and out of the play in tournament. Yeah, not good enough in any way. You know, this is, uh, you know, one of the most prolific offenses in the league. The Luka Doncic pick and roll uh, is as tough to, to prepare for and as tough action to, to slow down as any in the league. And, um, you know, with a lot of guys out, we had to come in and execute at a high level. And we executed very poorly, you know, to start the game and really that whole first half, you know, uh, what, our, what our game plan was. And then, you know, as we tried to adjust, you know, to uh, to look at some plan B's and plan C's, you know, we, we just didn't execute well enough and, and play with enough toughness, IQ, intelligence, focus and fight, you know, in that half. So uh, not acceptable and, um, you know, just a poor performance across the board, coaches, players, everybody. The reeling Lakers will play at the Utah Jazz tomorrow night. Last night, the Alamo Heights boys soccer team erased a 1-0 halftime deficit to defeat Harlandale 2-1 in the UIL Class 5A second round playoffs. The Mules played with the win at their backs and controlled possession for the majority of the second half. Clayton Holmes tallied the equalizer in the 44th minute, while fellow senior Gavin Wiltshire scored the game-winning goal on a penalty kick with 11 minutes left in regulation. It all comes down to the Mules' second half adjustments. We knew we would dominate possession against this team, but we knew they're also incredibly strong defensively, so we had to be able to break that down. Um, and we had a great attacking runs, great tactics by the coach um, to move the ball across the field, and uh, we were able to break through in the end. Coach Perez made some great tactic, tactical changes, uh, and you know we've been through this before with the wind, and we knew what we, we knew what we needed to do, and you know all of our teammates are so hardworking, so we knew we wanted it, and we got it. The Mules will take on Georgetown the third round and later this week. And boy, I'll tell you, that wind was really whipping yeah. around, wasn't it? Man, that's something. And you have to adjust to it. It's so bad. You do, yeah. All right, Larry. <laughs> Thank you much. Well, after nearly a year up in space, a NASA astronaut is back on Earth, but he's not quite home just yet. A look at his big return still ahead.
The CDC has signed off on a second COVID-19 booster shot of Moderna and Pfizer for people over 50. Anyone over 50 can now get a booster, but the CDC says they are especially important for people over 65 and people over 50 with underlying health conditions. The CDC sign off with the CDC sign off. These fourth shots can go straight into arms. As for those under 50, they will learn more about the need for an additional booster when the FDA meets next. Wednesday. A Republican senator will back Supreme Court nominee Katanji Brown Jackson. Susan Collins of Maine is the first Republican to announce plans to support President Joe Biden's pick for the high court. After hearing Jackson's testimony and meeting with her twice, Collins says she believes Jackson, quote, possesses the experience, qualifications, and integrity to serve as an associate justice on the Supreme Court, end quote. The Judiciary Committee is expected to vote on the nomination on April 4th. Well, now to NASA astronaut Mark Van de Heij. He touched down today after a record-breaking 355 days in space. Wow. He landed aboard a Russian aircraft, a return trip rattled by Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. After a record 355 days in space, touchdown. Mark Van de Heij and two Russian cosmonauts carried out of Russia's Soyuz spaceship Wednesday morning, moments after landing on Earth. The weather is beautiful. Everything went nominal. No injuries. No, nobody was hurt. Van de Heij giving a thumbs up while being medically evaluated. The crew detached overnight from the International Space Station sharing a hug before their trip home. The Soyuz MS-19 begins the journey home to complete a year-long odyssey for Mark Van de Heij. Even with tension between America and Russia over the war in Ukraine, one of the Russian cosmonauts saying this. People uh, have problem on Earth, on orbit. We are one crew. For weeks, the head of the Russian space agency, Dmitry Rogozin, posted on social media threatening to leave Van de Heij on the space station in response to American sanctions on Russia, making this spoof video showing the Russian cosmonauts waving goodbye to Van de Heij. Another video showed technicians covering up the U.S. and Japanese flags on a rocket. It's very childish thing to be doing when you're responsible for people's lives in space to be producing videos of leaving people behind and threatening to drop a space station. I think he has more important things to be doing, but he clearly doesn't. Many now questioning the future of Russia's relationship with America in space. One long seen as peaceful and necessary. Van de Heij and the NASA team will head back to the U.S. today, landing in Houston tonight, where he'll be able to see and hug his family for the first time in nearly a year. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. David, yes or no, a year in space? Me? Yeah. I'd go tomorrow. You'd go tomorrow? Well, I need a pack, so I'd go today, but I need a pack. You so need that I'd time. Go. And yeah. I guess you had a better view of this blue sky we see right Ooh, now. You don't even need to take anything with you, really. No. <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess that's true. Stay here. Uh, speaking of space, uh, uh, we were just talking about this. NOAA has issued a G3 strong geomagnetic, geomagnetic storm watch in effect for tomorrow. What does that mean? Nothing really for us, okay? Technology generally isn't impacted by geomagnetic storms of that magnitude. They've got to be a little stronger. But the aurora borealis, which you can see, across the northern latitudes, comes a little bit further south. So some of the northern states in the United States may be able to see the aurora. Kind of interesting stuff. Uh, you see that every now and then, sometimes when the sun spits out some energy. Anyway, uh, some space news for you. We got to come back here to Earth. I want to show you this picture. Uh, this is out of San Antonio. This is a tree down, presumably because of the wind. Winds have been strong enough now to do some damage like this. Uh, gusts close to 40 miles per hour here in San Antonio. So we thank you for submitting that picture on our KSAT Connect. You can do so as well on our KSAT weather app there at the bottom. Uh, you can submit pictures. We love to see them. Uh, there's look at the wind gusts gusting in 37 here in San Antonio right now. We've, we've seen some gusts up over 40 miles per hour out west. This is going to be sort of the the numbers that we see over the next couple of hours. Gusts right around 40 miles per hour into the afternoon, into the late afternoon. Temperature wise, 78 degrees here in San Antonio, 83 in Pleasanton. You'll see numbers get a little bit warmer, but it's it's a dry heat, as we say, as dew points have really fallen off. 76 in Holota, 72 Bernie State, 77 Bolverde, 77 at Randolph, 78 New Braunfels, 
and the forecast for today. We'll see those temperatures get up into the mid 80s this afternoon. As we said, 85 here in San Antonio, 70s in the Hill Country. But tonight with the dry air, lighter winds, look at the temperature tomorrow morning, 48 here in town, 40s in the Hill Country. So you may want a jacket tomorrow. You won't need it all day, but you'll definitely want it in the morning. Thanks, Justin. Well, avocados may already be a part of your diet. How a new study could give you even more reason to eat the popular fruit. And the Texas Open field is set. Some of the top golfers in the world, in the world, are ready to tee it up at the Valero Texas Open. Larry Mirrors with some of the big names. If you're wondering when gas and grocery prices will come down, it's probably not anytime soon. What a new forecast predicts about prices for the rest of the year after the break. New government forecasts show you might have to pay even more for groceries and gas in the coming months. The USDA now predicts grocery prices will increase up to 4% throughout this year. And the average cost of dining out could set a new record. That's partly because Ukraine and Russia usually export a lot of world's wheat and corn. And China's new COVID-19 lockdowns are making it hard for supply chains to recover from the pandemic. Oil prices dipped a bit this week after Russia said it would ease up its assault on parts of Ukraine. However, don't expect it to make much of a difference at the pump. It's called uh, rockets and feathers, meaning when the price goes up uh, of the price per barrel, that means your gas station price goes up like a rocket. When the price comes down per barrel, the gas station price comes down like a feather. And U.S. oil producers aren't increasing drilling much to help. Well, the California company isn't leaving anything to waste. It's taking cheese byproducts and turning it into alcohol. And we will get more on that in just a second, but let's join uh, President Biden as he talks about the COVID-19 situation here in the U.S. Making up nearly 55% of new COVID cases. The CDC green lighting a second booster shot for people 50 and older, available four months after the first booster. The president will be receiving his second Pfizer booster shot after his remarks here today. Biden's first booster was also the Pfizer shot, which he received back in September. President Biden expected to focus on the launch of a new website, covid.gov, designed to give Americans better access to things like vaccines, tests, treatments, and masks, along with updates about COVID outbreaks in your area. They're billing this as sort of a one-stop shop website. There were other websites before for things like testing and vaccines. The idea here is to combine it all into one convenient place for Americans. The White House also urging the need for more COVID funding, which is especially essential to test and treat millions of Americans who don't have health insurance. Uh, we're, as we're waiting for the president here, that funding has been stalled in Congress. And it's something that is really important when you look at things like people who are uninsured going to get a vaccine, going to get testing. Some of that funding for those programs is already starting to run out. The president expected to send an urgent message to Congress, to Capitol Hill, to get them to act. As we're here just waiting for the president to come up to the podium, I think we have another minute here. I want to bring in our doctor, uh, Jen Ashton, our chief medical correspondent here, who's at the desk with me while we're waiting. We also are told, as we noted there, the president's going to get that booster shot, that second booster shot today. A lot of people wondering whether they should or should not get this, and there's not widespread agreement within the scientific community on this. Uh, no, there, there isn't, and I'm, maybe we'll get clarification We'll come back to that. This. Let's listen to the president. Today I'd like to update uh, you all on where we stand on COVID-19. Because of the strategy we executed over the past year on vaccinations, testing, treatments, and more, we're now in a new moment in this pandemic. It does not mean that COVID-19 is over. It means that COVID-19 no longer controls our lives. That's what it means. Cases are ticking up as we thought they might. But now, thanks to the foundation we've laid, America has the tools to protect people, all people. And, you know, as we've done I'm from day one, my administration is making it easier than ever for Americans to access these tools. Today, I'm announcing the launch of COVID.gov, COVID.gov, a one-stop <coughs> one shop where anyone in America can find what they need to navigate the virus. Free vaccines and boosters, free at-home tests, high-quality masks, 
And uh, for the latest information about the level of COVID-19 spread in your community, you can get that immediately. Now, you'll also be able to find our new test to treat locations, which I announced in my State of the Union address. These are pharmacies and other places in your neighborhood where you can get tested. And if you're positive, you can get life-saving treatments all in one stop. We've already stood up 2,000 test and treat sites, test and treat sites across the country. We're also nearly at, we have nearly 200 sites just to serve military families and veterans communities as well. We've done uh, what we've done throughout the pandemic. We've ensured there, these locations are at the hardest hit, hardest to reach communities as well. The bottom line, no longer will Americans have to scour the internet to find vaccines, treatments, tests, or masks. It's all there. And just go visit covid.gov, covid.gov. And let me remind you, when I took office about 14 months ago, the pandemic was raging, the economy was reeling, and the deficit was soaring. Most schools were closed. We didn't have enough vaccines. The unemployment claims were sky high. And then we got to work and we delivered. Enough vaccines for every American months ahead of schedule. Effective treatments, at-home tests that are free and accessible. Over 99% of our schools are open again. Businesses are open again. And because of how we responded, we created more jobs last year than ever before. 6.7 million jobs. And by the way, we did it while cutting the deficit, the largest one-year deficit reduction in American history. Say that again, the largest one-year deficit reduction in American history. But none of that happened by accident. We are able to do it because we coordinated across the government partner with state and local leaders, governors on both sides of the aisle, and the private sector to leverage every resource we had to fight against this virus. We left no stone unturned, and we were able to do it because Congress worked with us and provided us the necessary funding. But now, just as we've reached a critical turning point in this fight, Congress has to provide the funding America needs to continue to fight COVID-19. We're already seeing the consequences of congressional inaction. The monoclonal antibody, take monoclonal antibodies, for example. They've helped save lives. This isn't partisan, it's medicine. But Congress hasn't provided enough money to keep purchasing these monoclonal bi uh, antibodies. We've had to cancel planned orders and cut the supply we're sending to the states. Without more funding, we'll start to run out of them by the end of May. The end of May. We've also had to scale back our plan to purchase more preventive therapies for Americans who are immunocompromised, critical tools to protect the most vulnerable among us. Without more funding, we risk running out of the supply by this fall. The same is true of testing. It took months to ramp up our testing capacity. The Omicron, we saw how vital, and with Omicron, we saw how vital it was. And we have enough tests on hand to weather the surge. Without funding, we're not going to be able to sustain the testing capacity beyond the month of June. And if we fail to invest, we leave ourselves vulnerable if another wave of the virus hits. Look, on vaccines and most important tool in this fight, we're also running a risk. Yesterday, the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, authorized the fourth shot for those 50 years and older. We know boosters are critical to providing an additional level of protection. That's why I plan to get my second booster today, uh, right here after I'm done speaking. If you haven't gotten your first booster, please don't wait. Do it today. Those who are 50 and older, as well as those who are Im Im immunocompromised, can now get, it, get even more protection than they have from the initial uh, first doses. We have enough supply to give booster shots to those newly eligible individuals. But if Congress fails to act, we won't have the supply we need this fall to ensure the shots are available free, easily accessible for all Americans. Even worse, if we need a different vaccine for the future to combat a new variant, we're not gonna have enough money to purchase it. We cannot allow that to happen. Congress, 
We need to secure additional supply now. Now. We can't wait until we find ourselves in the midst of another surge to act. It'll be too late. And we also need this, this funding to continue our efforts to vaccinate the world with commitments we made. It's critical to our ability to protect against new variants. There's no wall you can build high enough to keep out a virus. Congress needs to act now, please. Let me close with this. I've worked so hard to get our lives. We've worked so hard to, we, all of us, have worked so hard to get our lives back. We're summoning every ounce of American resilience, pulled every lever of our government, called upon the goodness, decency, and patriotism of American people. Together, we turned an unthinkable pain into an extraordinary progress and purpose. Americans are back to living their lives again. We can't surrender that now. Congress, please, act. You have to act immediately. The consequences of an action are severe. They'll only grow with time. But it doesn't have to be that way. We've proven what we can do when we work together. So I urge Democrats and Republicans to get this done with urgency. Let's stand united. Let's continue to pull together. Let's get this done. Thank you, and God bless you all, and may God protect our troops, and I'm going to get my second booster shot. I'm not sure what I'm doing on stage. President Biden speaking from the White House there. Mr. President, what is the danger of Putin being left in the dark by his military advisors? I'm reluctant to come. Can you comment on the declassified intelligence that he doesn't trust his military leadership since it is declassified? No, I can't. Well, the president, can you provide security guarantees for Ukraine as part of peace talks? Doing great. Is the U.S. willing to provide security guarantees to Ukraine as part of peace talks? Okay. All right. Let me just right away, okay? Mr. President, are you going to extend Title 42? We'll have a decision on that soon. What did President Zelensky tell you about the... The four countries of vaccination will infect your, uh, the, the fight against COVID here. What did President Zelensky tell you about... Somebody asked me about the vaccine. Are you going to have Mr. President, what do you want to hear from President today about negotiations with Russia? I've always thought that... Perhaps as expected there, President Biden talking about COVID from the White House, also fielding questions from reporters about Ukraine and a variety of other issues. But there the president getting his second booster shot, his fourth shot total, the Pfizer vaccine, after speaking about the urgent need for Congress to act and increase COVID funding as the country... and enters the uh, next phase of the pandemic. Let's see if the president answers some more questions here. see if I can get to see them. They're, Today? Good, they're good people. I have them. We're trying to work that out. Thank you. I, what did President Zelensky tell you? you? So once again, President Zelensky Biden here from the White House talking about the new website. You can see it right there in some of the back uh, boards there, covid.gov. They're billing it as sort of a one-stop shop website where people can go get information about testing, about vaccines, about treatments, all in one location. Yeah, you've been uh, listening to ABC's coverage of President Biden giving us an update on COVID-19. Once again, he uh, emphasized the new website, covid.gov, where you can find out about vaccines, boosters, tests, masks, test and treatment locations, things like that. And it's all free. So you can you can kind of keep up with that. And he also talked about the financial situation we're yes. in when it comes to paying for all these COVID therapies and all these COVID tests and whatnot. Asking for Congress to please act quickly, give more money, and, and let's do this in a bipartisan a bipartisan way. There. Yeah. He was started out asking, and he ended up basically begging Congress to, to give them some more funds to uh, to fight COVID. So, of course, we'll have more on our website, KSET.com, and a lot more on KSET 12 News at 5 and 6. We'll be right back. This Day in Fiesta History is powered by the Silverado and your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. I've never seen a hat like that. I'm only in Texas. Everything's big. Fiesta hats. They're a tradition that literally gets bigger and bigger every year, and there's no such thing as too ridiculous or too colorful. So no outfit would be complete without a hat. Their history's a little fuzzy, but it's believed big, fancy hats were worn during the first Battle of Flowers parades more than a century ago. Another possible inspiration, the crowns worn by Fiesta royalty. 
A spectacular hat can turn anyone into a fiesta queen or king, or at least make you feel like one. One event that truly celebrates this unique fiesta fashion is the Women's Club of San Antonio's annual hat contest and luncheon. These ladies have some great hats, but they're not alone. Viva Fiesta! Woo! You'll see crazy hats at almost every Fiesta event. If it looks like you're carrying a Fiesta float on your head and the colors are truly blinding, know that your hat is perfect. Nothing like the hats around Fiesta. I've never seen the hats before. No. Those are incredible. You I, haven't been to a Fiesta yet. I've never. You? This is going to uh, be my very first ooh. Fiesta, and I'm shaking with excitement. We've got good weather for Fiesta. Today. You're going to love it. Uh, you guys missed the perfect segue there. Hold on to your hat. Oh. Oh. Especially those big ones. I mean, this is <laughs> blow right away. Unless they're heavy. And then in that case, maybe, maybe they'll stay on. We'll see. But the, the, the winds, very, very gusty today. Gusting to 37 right now. Well, it just changed. 33 here in San Antonio. So a little bit of an improvement, but we're still seeing some gusts out west close to 40. In general, it's going to be a, a windy day here around South Texas. And then on top of that, We've got the drier air starting to work in from the west. So dew points are in the 30s. That's fairly low. We had a little bit of rain this morning, but uh, it didn't really do much for us. It just wasn't enough. And the soils and all the vegetation is just so dry. And so as you might imagine, there is a pretty high fire risk today. Temperatures have jumped up to 80 now. I think we make it into the mid 80s this afternoon, probably staying in the 70s in the hill country. So it'll be a warm day. Uh, but it's more of that dry heat. 73 Bernie State, 72 Canyon Lake, 78 New Braunfels, 78 right now in Divine. There's the scene outside, lots of blue skies. And uh, temperatures, as we mentioned, at 80. Dew point 34, westerly winds at 20, gusting to 33. There is, uh, it's another critical fire weather day. We've had several of those, it seems like, here over the past couple of weeks. But this includes basically the entire area, parts of West Texas all the way over to Houston. And it's because we have these strong winds uh, behind this system that is now pushing east and producing severe weather as it does. This line starting to produce uh, not only uh, severe thunderstorms, but some tornado warnings now starting to pop up in Louisiana, some wind gusts to 80 miles per hour. So it's going to be a big severe weather day for parts of the southeast as this system progresses east. Uh, widespread severe weather. And this is a pretty huge risk. Uh, geographically, especially, I mean, this uh, this covers a lot of ground here, and there could be some tornadoes today. Unfortunately, there across the southeast, we're on the back side of it here, uh, and we're we're just getting the wind. But a little closer look here, and you can see where uh, those tornado watch boxes are in place. Memphis included in this new one. New Orleans could be under the gun again today too. After they already saw a tornado just a couple weeks ago. Forecast temperatures today, 64. Well, that's this morning, uh, but we'll jump up into the 70s and eventually 80s this afternoon. 85 here in San Antonio this afternoon, 84 Pearsall, 81 Hondo, 78 in Bandera. All in all, a, a fairly warm day, but tonight, as we get the dry air in here, temperatures really fall off. We fall down into the 40s by tomorrow morning, so it'll be a chilly start. Thankfully, the winds will be quite a bit calmer tomorrow. Less wind is a good thing. As we look at the uh, dew point tracker, We'll see dry air in here tomorrow and Friday, and then the dew points start to increase again as we get into the weekend and next week. That's going to lead to some rain chances, maybe even some storm chances. In the meantime, we've got uh, 84 tomorrow as Fiesta begins. Pretty good weather Thursday and Friday. Moisture does try to increase Saturday and Sunday. That means some morning clouds. And then by Monday, there is a chance for some thunderstorms. Now the question is timing. When will they occur? Looks like late Monday, early Tuesday. That's the way it looks right now. That is subject to change. But it's that time of year where we have to watch for a few strong storms, too. Just something to think about. We'll keep you posted as we get a little bit closer. We'll be right back. Right now on KSAT.com, there's a new millionaire in town. The lucky person purchased a lottery ticket for the Powerball drawing on February 12th. And they matched all five numbers, but they did not match the Powerball number. That means they only won a measly $2 million. Oh, wow. Okay. All right, you can find out where the ticket was sold. Just go to KSAT.com. We're not going to tell you. You have to go to KSAT.com. I'll let you know. Exactly. Got to go there. Do some work. <laughs> That's all but for us for now. For KSAT 12, we'll be joining SA Live. It starts. You, know, you missed the um, cupcakes they had yesterday. Oh. But I bet they got something just as good today. So I hope so. What did what, what, you say? SA Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square, this is SA Live. Oh, hello, 
and happy Wednesday or happy Fiesta Eve. Tomorrow is the official start to Fiesta, but today is your first shot at getting one of our free SA Live Fiesta medals. And you're looking at it right there. Don't come down here. No. Not here. We're going to tell you where. Uh huh. Good afternoon. I'm Bjorn Gorstiza. You know, and I, I know it's our medal, but that's the coolest medal that, that I we think it's the coolest medal we've ever had. So, yeah, whoever, whoever did that one. So, and I'm Mike Osterhage, and oh, we are excited for Fiesta. Can't wait for it because, again, just one day away. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. All hey, right. Hey. hey. Oh, my goodness. What is Making going sure on? everybody. Oh, Woo! Okay. Mr. Pinata. Mr. Pinata, what are you doing? Well, I'm making sure that we have San Antonio a, fie a fi safe fiesta, and I'm giving the city a good limpia this year. I love that. Keeping the city clean. Yes, one spray at a time. Now, for those who don't know, who is Mr. Pinata? Well, Mr. Pinata is a local artist, and this was a project that was created just for San Antonio to take fine art in public places. Okay, what have you been doing for the past couple of years then? Well, just as you know, like the pandemic affected everyone, so Mr. Pinata escaped into the jungles in Mexico, and then I heard Fiesta was coming back, so I decided to come back this year to clean the city. All right, <laughs> big, big, big kettle lights all. <laughs> okay, and of course, you're going to be somewhere. Where are you going to be for Fiesta? Have you heard of Fiesta Fiesta? Oh, we're yes. going to be there. Yes. We're going to be there tomorrow. tomorrow. I'm going to be there tomorrow. <laughs> So right. we'll see you there, and hopefully we get to see everybody out there. Okay, I got a question for you. What happens if somebody comes up with a stick and tries to whack you and get some candy? Like a pinata. Well, I got my security guard off. Ah, okay. Yes, yeah. he's got muscle. He's got muscle <laughs> to make sure. All right, well, don't forget, you can see Mr. Pinata tomorrow at Fiesta Fiesta at Hemisphere. It starts at 4 p.m., and, of course, I'm going to be there with a very lovely young lady who is next to me right now. Yes. That's right. I can't wait for this. This is everybody so excited. He'll have for new it, so. pants. You've got new pants. And don't forget, you can follow Mr. Pinata's adventures. There's a link on our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right. Now, of course, Fiesta is also about all the yummy food and snacks, right? Yep. So we want to know what's your favorite Fiesta snack. I'm a huge fan of corn in a cup. You know, I almost have to think, because I was going to say funnel cake, but that's more of just an all yeah. overall fair type thing. But yeah, corn and a cup, yeah. pretty darn good. And a margarita to wash it down. There too. you go. Now you're cooking with gas. So let us know what is your favorite Fiesta snack at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. And we'll see, you may see your answer a little later on in the show. Well, of course, like we were just talking about, it's not Fiesta without the snacks here. And our next guest has been working with roasted corn since he was nine years old. We're not shucking you there. <laughs> yeah. That's my corny joke for the day. And he and his family getting ready to continue the tradition feeding the Alamo City for Fiesta. Yes, Jesse Mendoza, owner and corn master yes. with In Lotus Locos, is here yes, to show us what makes their corn stand out from the rest. Yes, ma'am. So corn the corn master. Corn master. That's How correct. How do you get to be Welcome. a corn master? How do you get there? Well, you have to sh you have to shuck a few thousand cobs of corn. Uh, you have to be able to operate a machine. I uh, make my own machine, so I'm able to operate it. I know every, the ins and out of everything. And then you got to get the corn off the cob, and you've got Correct. a neat little device over there that right gets here. it off nice and easy, right? Yes, sir. All right, explain so, to us what's happening. Basically, I took the husk off the cob, and you just push it right through. Hey, that makes easy work of that, baby. Wow, look at that. Super easy. And, and the gloves are on because it's, of course, it's hot. Mm -hmm. And you said roasting the corn just adds, adds another layer of flavor to it, right? Correct. If you think about steaks, if you think about uh, when you cook a nice big juicy steak, there's that nice piece of fat on there. You want to sear that fat so all the flavor goes right back into the steak. It's the same way with corn. You want to cook it in the husk. All those sugars, the flavor, the moisture stays in that husk, and you want it to just go right back into the corn. Okay. The I love everything you just said. Okay, yes, so what is the secret to corn in a cup? So the secret to corn in a cup is really just your imagination. So, so a lot of the times you're going to see the Typical, uh, oh yeah, go right ahead. Line you'll see cup. the typical, um, you'll see the street corn, the in uh, vaso and everything is gonna be, uh, you know, butter, it's gonna be crema, it's gonna be mayonnaise, the Valentina, like you just put. And then, really, what we try to do to make it really special is we try to give you basically anything you wanna do. So, we have all the condiments here, and uh, whenever we pop up, we have all our condiments laid out on a big counter. You can put exactly all the condiments you want. You could put as much or as little. Yeah, that's butter Throwing right there. Some butter? Okay. Definitely some butter. Uh, my mom always says butter makes everything better. Absolutely. I believe her. Yeah. I mm -hmm. love your mom's yes. advice. My yes, thighs indeed. don't believe her, but I believe her. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, yeah, and 
all the butter you can, and then I would say if you like really spicy, uh, you put the Valentina in there, so you're good. I would say uh, the hot Cheetos are a really great option if you want some crunch in there. Yes. Uh, you can never have too much cheese, so you can put hot Cheetos yes. and Parmesan. And then uh, typical elote way is you'll definitely put some uh, lime juice on there, right there. Yep. Okay. So I got just Parmesan, and this is lemon pepper. Lemon pepper. Okay. Ooh, like that. Oh. And then you just mix it all up? Mm -hmm. Just mix it all up to your okay. heart's desire. Oh okay. my goodness. Now, there are several ways to serve yes, the roasted corn, yes, right? So we've got it here in a cup, what else? Yes, so we also serve it, uh, we serve it on the cob just like this, and then we also serve it in this way called the corn volcano. Mm. And that's not something you just kind of dreamed up. No. That's traditional for Mexico, right? Yes, it is something that we've seen uh, in Mexico and some of the different regions, and we try to aim towards more the Spanish influence of corn. Uh, a lot of the time they try to keep it super fresh, they try to keep it as uh, as clean as possible, if you can kind of think of it that way, and we honestly try to give the best product we can. We don't want to do uh, something that's been sitting there in a can or frozen or something. We try to give the freshest corn possible and try to do everything we can. Okay, and of course like that as well, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Yeah. But you said you've shucked how many years of corn in your life? Oh, that I can't tell you. I can tell you that in a hour, I can probably shuck about 300 ears of corn in one hour. Yep. Really? Yes, sir. Very okay. good. Okay, now what Fiesta events will you be at this year? So we're going to be at Fiesta Oyster Bake this weekend. Mm -hmm. We're going to be downtown uh, Travis Park on Sunday, and then we're going to also be in King William Fair April 9th, and we'll be uh, selling corn and turkey legs at King William Fair. How did you get started? How did I get started? Well, uh, this was about close to 40 years ago. My dad started just making roasted corn machines, and he popped up actually at King William Fair. Uh, he bought a ton of cases of corn, and nobody knew what it was. They no no idea. They were like, "What's roasted corn?" And so he ended up eating a shirt on that one. Uh, but uh, he started giving out samples, just you know, showing people what it is. After that, it became what it was, and you could kind of almost say like the reason that corn is popular in Fiesta today is because of that. Parmesan, that. lemon, pepper. I'm yes, sold. Sir. I love that. So love it. Thank mm. you, it loves so you too. much, Jesse. Well, you can try a Lotus Locos for yourself this Friday and Saturday at Oyster Bay. You're also going to be uh, in Travis. Park on Travis Sunday, Park. Yep. okay? But for more information, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right. Oh, by the, by the way, forgot, yes. to, forgot to give him one of our oh, medals. Yeah. Oh, there yes. you go. Here oh, you go. Thank you. Thank you. in charge of one thing. I know, I okay. know. <laughs> okay. Next right. year, maybe we can get the roasted corn on there. Yes! There we go. I like the way you think. Okay, well, our big medal reveal was yesterday, and today, we're giving away SA Live medals for free. And now the big reveal on the location and Jen Tobias Trusky is there to help us with that. And she's somewhere downtown with the prize medal. Good afternoon, Jen. Yes, hello guys. Yeah, it's a little hard to tell where I'm at still right now. I'm downtown with Metro Health at their Fiesta de Salud event. And now the big moment you've been waiting for, by the way, I love our medal. Isn't it so cute? The chicken on a stick is my favorite part. So we're gonna tell you where we're at. It is Milam Park. Yes, that is where we're at. It's at 500 West Commerce Street. You can see it right there on the map on your screen. You can come out starting at 2 p.m. to get your free SA Live medal and maybe a few other freebies as well. Joining me now is Renee Rendon. He is the outreach manager for Metro Health. Renee, hello, thanks for good being afternoon. Here with us today. So let's talk about Fiesta de Salud. It's still a fairly new event. I think you said maybe the third year here, but tell us about what people can expect here today. Yeah, so Fiesta de Salud, it's our big health event that we have for Fiesta. Um, we have, we're gonna have COVID vaccinations, free SCD screenings, over 80 vendors. We have food trucks and uh, live music. So a lot of good information for the public. Yes, and they're setting up right now. We are in that mobile unit that he mentioned earlier. That's where we're at now. But National Public Health Week is coming up next week. So the, the, the this year's theme is public health is where you are. And how is it that you guys are meeting the community where you are? I mean, with that mobile unit, that is one way, right? We're, that we're in now. Exactly. So with this mobile unit we can go in the community we can provide these free STD screenings we can provide that information and health education that they might not be um, having in other areas so we meet them by going to the community and that's obviously important to you guys because you're going to them so there's no excuses and they can just kind of 
exactly. make their way here, yes. right? Okay, so this mobile STD truck is out here as well. Why is it so important to get tested? You know, it's important to get tested because you need to know your status. So one of, some of the scariest things are things we don't know. And by knowing our status, we're able to feel more comfortable about our general health and our overall health. Got it, okay. And you have your medal that y'all will be giving away. You wanna show it to the camera? Yeah, of course. Here? Got our medal right here. Come get tested and you will receive this Metro Health medal. And then let's show ours again. And so if you get tested, you will get this one here, but we have our KSAT crew hanging out that will be able to give you the SA Live medal. So again, this is how they will be here. It starts at? 3 p.m. 3 p.m. and it will go on until? 8 p.m. 8 o'clock, all right. The events get started. Again, 3 o'clock runs through 8 p.m. Milam Park. There's no cost, by the way, for the STD testing. Free medals along with that, and you can learn more about other Metro Health programs. For more information on Metro Health, give them a call, 210-207-8830. You can also visit the website, sanantonio.gov slash health. All right, back to you guys. Thank you so much. So Dad. fun having metal yeah. giveaways and swapping medals with everybody. I love it. All right, still ahead on SA Live. It is one of the wildest Fiesta events. The King of Corneation is here to give us a preview of this year's show. But first, oh, Fet lovers, listen up. There's a big event happening this weekend. We got a preview of the fun they're offering people and their pets alike. It's next on SA Live.